Okay, nothing much to report today except the, the fact that they're back on the tools, the big boys' toys, as you can probably hear in the background. So, uh, that one's starting to look quite nice today. That new leaf should be quite uh, impressive. Exactly, but the one after that, mm, well, this one I've probably just watered it to move things back. So I think the usual thing, move things back and out, back and out of the way. Sort of thing. Oh well, we'll work out a better system in the future, fellas. Oh, new new leaves coming up on this one. As you can probably see, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, so far no crap, no crap out on that leaf. So far, anyway. These are looking quite nice. Oh, I should have bought out my condo book. Yeah, maybe I'll do that tomorrow or something. I'll show you comparison between the this look here and the condo pictures of the plants plants in the wild sort of thing yeah so uh, very um, convincing so and then this one's putting up another leaf down there I don't know if you can see that I'm going to take that bit of grass leaf out of the way I right, damage that one there and anyway so that's with the aluminium of course uh, there is some comparison between aluminium uh, iron and zinc Oh yeah, this one's getting, this one I think it's going to be quite quite a whopper relief that one. So these ones are still uh, doing all right, stabilised quite well, still flushing. But uh, yeah, talking about flush. This one's, uh, I mean, this is the best stabilised I think I've ever had. So you know, this one's um, still flushing. So it'll be a while. Anyway. Uh, yeah, back into the left. So uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, sorry about that, fellas. Uh, still waiting on stuff from that one, but this one's still okay, and the and the flower stalk is still getting slightly thicker. Yeah, I'll take it around there for Gideon. He likes all, he, he likes all the angles. Okay, oh this one I thought was crapped out, but it's got a new leaf coming here. Yeah, well, the new leaf on there is fattening up, fattening up considerably if I can get the sunlight on it without getting shadow. Anyway, we've got the zinc ones in. I think they're stabilising, but whether the zinc's going to have an effect, whether it's going to be positive effect, negative effect, you never know, it might make the traps go that sort of pinky colour, you never know. So, so uh, yeah. Iron ones. Yeah. You know what all these little bubbles are all about, fellas? Still, still no movement from that one, but that one might be fattening up in the centre, so you never know. Might, might get a surprise from that one. Oh, yes, this is the other news. Go back to normal way. Can you see the sand there? Starting to whiten up or become albium sand, because I've noticed this here, the sand here, if I go to spot Cullen. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the noise is distracting me. That sand there's gone Albion. And there's a little bit of green down the bottom there. If you can see that properly, if I can bring it up, that sand there has gone Albion. All, the, all through the pot, it's gone Albion. Oh, come around. So, so. But the, uh, as I said, the, what, what we think is cyanophyte is only growing just uh, well, down near the chalk and also near the, um, the newspaper sales. So, do we make that assumption now that we've got cyanophyta going all the way down in a ring down there on the um, on the walls of the pot sort of thing? And do we make the assumption that we've got cyanophyta now growing just under this uh, capping here, but no nowhere else really down the pot sort of thing? So, because um, it's starting to. Um, make a move and we're starting to get some sort of bl I don't even see there's some sort of blushing on some of these leaves like 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 this see that sort of blushing on the leaf oh uh, damn I, I, I'm trying to get it behind without getting you know can you see that blushing on the leaf there that sort of oh it's almost a glowing red on it so sort of thing 
yeah, even this one is starting to get it on the edge down there on the edge of the leaf. Amy's got a new leaf there and a new one that looks coming looks like it's coming out down there so we might the, the plant actually might be splitting but I'm really waiting on this one to open up because I think it's gonna look really 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 fantastic if it, when, when it gets going sort of thing and then this new leaf down there is I just like the look if you go on the uh, go on the fly strap uh, fly trap store website and go for the Bradar photographs in, the, in, in his trip to North, my trip to North Carolina, I think it's called. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> not bad looking for uh, fallen over pictures. Uh, and I'm actually getting, I'm actually going to get a good. I think I'm going to get a good flav on that one, even though the first one uh, buggered up. We, we say stronger things down here in in Oz, of course. Uh, calcium one's still going reasonable. So I said I'm going to try and make a push, depending on how well these uh, ones go. So um, yeah. Anyway, that's about. So the idea is, um, uh, do I really want to? Do I want to do a pot that's um, right down the middle, sort of thing? So we got newspaper sellers all down one side of the pot, and all all sand, stabilised sand on the other, sort of thing. Or do I want to do a, a, a triple one? So I have a pot where I have peat, coir, and sand. So that um, so in the in the centre I have um, I, I, I can have sand, and at the corners there I can have the combination of, of sand, coir, and peat, and and the other way other way around. Or, or, or I could do one that's just got triangle in it, in it so that you um, you have sand, coir, and peat. Not, sorry, no, not, sorry, I've got the wrong. Sand, coir and newspaper cellulose, sand, peat and newspaper cellulose, sand, bark chip and cellulose sort of thing. That's what I'm trying to say. So that in, in the centre of the pot, you've got a combination of, of the sand touching the uh, peat and touching the newspaper cellulose. So does the uh, having the, uh, the peat there improve the greening from the newspaper cellulose? And that, does that mean that it allows the roots to go all the way? So you get you, the roots can go all the way down that line sort of thing. Uh, so you have long roots growing. So you have long roots basically growing down this green stuff. So, so basically you have roots just growing down this green line sort of thing. It's just going all the way down a green line of the pot, all the way to as far as it extends into the, the nether regions of the pot sort of thing. Anyway, that's uh, enough for now. Let's go. So that's what I want to set up and want to try. So you know, I'm certainly in two minds about. Um, so it may be a case of should I put it all throughout as well? Because you know this idea with Donnie's uh, one one one, best growth of um, best best general growth of um, Drosera capensis. Let's move out. Oh, this is getting a bit noisy. So uh, the best growth of uh, Drosera capensis I've seen. Yeah, you know, just. Best general growth of Dr. Capensis I've seen uh, when he grew it in a 111 equal parts of uh, sphagnum, peat, and sand. And of course, if we make the assumption that the sphagnum is a, a white, is a white wood sort of thing, um, and the peat is a brown wood, and the, the, sand, the sand may contain a small amount of zinc, you never know. You know, remembering, you know, the sands around Perth are supposed, supposedly, if you look them up on the internet and in books and stuff, supposed to be zinc rich, so relatively zinc rich compared to other sands from around the world, I suppose. So, anyway, I wanted to go back to this diagram here, if I can find it. This one with the map, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, this one here. There's a few things, strange things like that. Like when they put the list of highways down there, they've got Highway 53. So out of all these highways here, here and over there, why did they choose 53? Is it because they were doing the study between 53 and 58 and 53 just stood out to them? Or was it they were driving down Highway 53 from uh, Duke uh, University Department of Marine Science uh, every day during the growing season for three growing seasons basically to measure all their measurements on the fly traps 
I don't know. I mean, why wouldn't you have in this one down here with with all these uh, plants down here? Why wouldn't you ha why wouldn't you list that highway? And talking about these plants down here, they talk about these like relocated lo um, new. Uh, um, they have the old ones. You have the new uh, relocated ones, and you have these new stations. So they actually found new stations that weren't listed in herbarium records or weren't known to people. There's some out there, but there's a couple of, couple of clusters. I've lost them now. <laughs> oh, I was looking at them last night on the on the JPEGs. Oh yeah, some out there, clusters together, and uh, I think it's the uh, clusters out there. I, I believe uh, out there. So it's the one as the ones out here that just out there. You know, how did they find them first of all? You know, did someone phone them up? Oh, I I, I hear you're doing a study on fly traps. I've got some on my property. Would you want to come out and have a look at them? and never having told anyone before in life, so there's no herbarium records. The other thing uh, is they're all long here and they're almost equally spaced the um, relocated stations. So if you can see that, they're relocated. Can you see that? They're all equally spaced. Is that because they're, every person's property along there is like 100 acre lots sort or of thing. Everyone along that, that highway, that road there, has got fly traps on their property. So from the middle of their property to the next middle of the property, it's an equal distance sort of thing, and that's why they just sort of almost, they, you know, they've got a pen go ping, 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 ping down there. It's not nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that every person on, on that road has got fly traps on their property, and they've all got like 100 acre lots from the from the the the, the past sort of thing, sort of thing. So um, and the other thing, the other big questions I um, I'm interested in is uh, why is it Wilmington? Why well, they always say about they always talk about 100 miles. Uh, around Wilmington, but if you do a hundred miles around Wilmington, it includes the ocean, doesn't it? Or am I just being too literal there? You know, uh, sort of thing. So uh, that's what that's what's interesting to me there. The other thing is, um, so what do they mean by this hundred miles round? Did it start off like a hundred miles? Because I think this is a hundred miles. That's thirty, sixty, ninety. 100 miles, 100 miles, that's about, 100 miles, yeah, it's, it's basically this distance here from my, from my uh, little finger to my index finger, from left to right sort of thing, or right to left I suppose, uh, is there, that distance there is basically 100 miles, so is that what the original idea was, it's just this big arc here, all along the coastal, the coastal, uh, along the coast here sort of thing, and somehow that's got confused with going in a circle, a hundred mile, and they're talking about a hundred mile radius, that's what you see in the books, because there's some plants that actually grow out here. And the one I got wrong before, it wasn't Horry, it was Moore County. That's why I think it's, it's, it's uh, interesting, you've actually got a county that's called Moore County there. So, is that because the soils look like a, um, a European or, or uh, like a British sort of, as a Moorish heath sort of thing, you know, a, a, a grey black surface horizon with coffee coloured soil underneath. Is that why they named the county Moor County? I don't know. I mean, but Beaufort, is that just a beautiful fort? A Bladen, because you've got blades, it's, it's a grassy area, you've got blades of grass. I don't know. Brunswick, you had the Bruns brothers making candles and the whole area started making candles, so they called it Brunswick. I don't know. Uh, Columbus, you know, <laughs> you know a, a column like Boston, but you know, they didn't have buses in those days. I mean, I would like to know all the derivations of these ones, but what's interesting, if you punch these uh, names into Google image search and put, you know, uh, Pemlico or something, and uh, uh, Pemlico flytrap down here or Pemlico Codani, blah blah blah. Maybe put uh, US or a, um, uh, NC for North Carolina in there. You get some interesting results coming up. You know things like Samson here. You know how did they name Samson? Is it because you know the the, the bush out there was very hairy? Uh, you had to be tough to live out there. I, I, uh, it was just the um, you know. There was a lot of churches out there, they gave it a biblical name, I don't know, I mean, it would be nice to know the derivation of some of these names, you know, why would you call a whole county Samson? You know, everyone in that area went bald at a young age, so, you know, it was losing hair, and they think, oh, okay, we'll call it Samson, you know. I don't know, you know, it's just, you know, and what, why do they call this thing Myrtle Beach? Are there myrtles behind the beach? Is that an alternative name for bay trees? Is that why we've got... 
The other thing is, why don't they um, cross the Santee River? Apparently, that's the cutoff, but because we know they grow down in uh, Florida, so you know, why can't they cross the Santee River? Is it like from the French, sand clots without trousers, a Santee? So is it like a without tea coloured water? Is what is that how it's named? I don't know. I don't. I don't know the uh, natural derivation of the. Image. In other words, you come down here, it's all brown tinted tannin rich water so then they can grow as soon as you get to the sandy river that's a, a freshwater river or something flowing out there and they can't cross the they can't cross the fresh water because it's got no tannins in it just an idea just putting it out there fellas i mean you could go on and on and on uh, you know uh, for you know for days about you know speculating on this and coco winty that's an interesting now that's the name of a town isn't it not a uh, you know, a county because it's not listed there unless for some reason, yeah, you know, is it one they've actually left off the list by accident? You know, mistakes happen, you know, like they've got the pH things around the wrong way in certain parts of the uh, paper. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, you could go on and talk about this stuff. But that's always been very interesting to me. Why did they pick Wilmington? Is it just because it's got this... Is it just got, got this filigreed inlet sort of thing? Well, well, if that's so, what about up here? And what about down here, this island place down here? I mean, does that have fly traps on it? Is it, you know, uh, this was back in 1950s. Was there no transport? Or we had to get like a ferry and, and there were only like university students. They couldn't afford it from their research finding the, the ferry out to this island. So they never got out there. Maybe all through the rest of their lives they're wondering, oh, I wonder, we, were, we would have loved to have gone out to that little bit of, you know, a little bit of iron spit out there, what do you want to call it? Uh, see if there were any fly traps in there because we, we re relocated these stations right there. It would be nice to know whether there were actually fly traps on the thing, but we could never afford to get out there or there was no road out there, there was no ferry at that time. But now, 2017, maybe there's a road out there. Someone else can go out there and have a look. You know, you might, might get a surprise. And what about these sandbars out here? How thick, how wide are they? I mean, if they're you know, at least a mile or so wide, you know. Um, you can walk along there and you might find that the fly traps on one end but not the other or on one side. You might get a surprise. You might find the, 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 the fly traps the thickest on the ocean side, which you wouldn't expect because you think they'd be getting all the salt spray and stuff like that and they don't like salt. You might, that might be completely erroneous, you never know. So uh, what about down here? Another bit sort of inlet there, Georgeville down there, you know, compared to Wilmington. Why Wilmington, fellas? Is it just the location? How did they pick that? They just toss a coin? Um, is there some trading uh, thing in there I don't know about? Some classical thing that everyone knows except me. I don't know. <laughs> or people that time knew. I don't know. But it would be nice to know why they picked Wilmington, you know, uh, <laughs> from a historical point of view. And, and why this idea uh, 100 miles? Is it because they, they know something? Because what about down here? See, if you look at that, what about around here then? It's a, it looks like the same sort of, you know, filigreed and going in there. There are, there are uh, recorded stations out there very close, but uh, so far no relocated stations. Was the water contaminated? Don't know. What happened? Did it get flooded or something? You know, after a th you know, 100,000 years, there was a big flood or something. It just happened to happen. It just happened to happen in the 1960s or something, I don't know. Beginning of climate change, wiped them all out in the air. I don't know, fellas. But it'd be interesting to know. And um, this, they talk about up there in uh, Moore County, I think it is, up in the, sa I think the sand hills of Moore County. So we've got Moore, does that mean actually Moors? And we have Sandy Moors. You know, the, as I said, the, uh, the, the grey to black surface horizon with uh, probably coffee coloured um, sand and stuff underneath. I don't know. Anyway, this is a bit of a, a long talkie, but that's just one of the things you can, you can just go on and on about these things. But you might want to punch those names in there and just see what comes up. Cause you'll get some good images coming up. And um, maybe tomorrow I'll get out my condo book and uh, my um, uh, national. Well, there are already very. Uh, Copy JPEGs on my Facebook page if you if you go into, I think it's books and paraphernalia. There's also a couple of clips earlier on this year I did, which I actually I've already filmed it. You might want to look those up. So uh, it's one with all the books I've, I've got a whole load of books out here. So um, you might want to look that up if you're interested. 
if you're really, uh, really into fly traps, you'll probably get a kick out there. Uh, but we'll talk about the other st um, other stuff. And oh, something else that jumped out at me the other night. Um, we've got the salt and pepper. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, they're talking about this salt and pepper stuff. You can certainly see with some of my sand that it's starting to look like very sticky salt. You know, almost like when you're down at the ocean on the beach, you, you, the salt seems to stick to you, sort of thing. So, uh, oh, yeah, this thing about the 3% slope. Now, they imply that the 3% slope actually runs back down to the the Pocaston, which is the bog on the hill, sort of thing. So, I don't know. We got this, you know, uh, where's this uh, transept diagram? That's the next, no, it's not the next page. Here, this one here. They imply that the slope is normally flat, but if, if there's any slope, it's only up to about 3%. Uh, 